but I really sort of dove in, played for the county, got in the county team, um, did well at county, got into the England team, became World Masters junior champion at 13, under 18s, being favourite for most tournaments, Mm -hmm. going to bottom of the barrel, sort of, you know, jumping into snooker, nobody knowing who I was. Quite a boring sport to watch I think it's a space in the market that you've just exposed and I didn't want everyone else to know <laughs> <laughs> I know that so today we are joined by Joe O'Connor professional snooker player how are you doing Joe I'm good thank you it's a pleasure to be here no it's a pleasure to meet you mate um I heard a lot about you obviously I've sported you back and forwards over up before we actually did this interview um, and made this happen but first and foremost I want to say for people who are, who are watching the can't see it's a lovely place you're in unbelievable um for anyone who is obviously into the snooker they know about you and other players and the you know they follow the sport one thing a lot of people don't know is how players got introduced to snooker and it's something i'm interested in um i've had a few players on the on the podcast now yeah. and what is your story being like joe how did you get introduced to snooker um so i first started playing football when i was about four four or five years old um played in my dad's team my dad run the, run the team um you know a few of us we had a decent side to be fair um and i played football up until i was about 10 and i went down the local working men's club and it was like a friday night i think my mum and dad used to go down there sort of have a few drinks and talk and there was a pool table there and it was one of them where you put your 50p on and the winner stays on and after a few weeks, I started to, um, you know, play more and more and, and win the odd, odd, odd game against, you know, the, the adults in the in the club. And one thing led to another. And I started to win more and more. And there was the odd night where I, I'd stay on for, you know, an hour or two. Mm. And I just, I just, I don't know, I enjoyed. I enjoyed Paul. I enjoyed winning. Um, and it just came to a point where I could join a pool team on a Tuesday night or go to my football training mm. and I had to make a decision when I was, I think it was 10. Um, do, I, do I enjoy pool more than football? And at, at that moment I did. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just took the leap and, and played pool and sort of knocked football on the head a little bit. Um, and I think around that time I had uh, Birmingham scouts come to watch me play and, and stuff like that. What's up people, if you're enjoying our content, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and make sure you press that notification bell so you don't miss another episode. You know, I was okay, um, steady, but no, I took Paul on the head and, and went on, played for the county, got in the county team, um, did well at county, got into the England team, became uh, World Masters junior champion at 13, under 18s. My that nice. Won the World Championship, two times European champion. And then a host of like team champions as well. I wonder what made you choose pool over football because obviously a young lad at that age, mate. Mm. Most I, can, I, I imagine ninety nine percent of people would have took footy. Yeah. Maybe it was the social aspect. What was it about pool that made you take? Do you think it was the fact that you were just better at it than what you were at football? But arguably not because you had the the Birmingham <laughs> yeah. scouts etc. looking at you. I think it was a little bit of a case of I picked it up a lot quicker than you know I probably did the football and. I don't know. I think I think it probably just was the winning and and because I was so young but competing at you know and not a bad level mm-hmm. for how old I was. I think I don't know. I just I think it's the winning maybe. Yeah. I just enjoyed the the being good sort of aspect of it. Did your parents notice how good you were? Like did they yeah. understand? Did they understand that actually this kid could be a star? Right at the start, I don't know. Mm. Um I'd like to say yes, but when when I'm you know first going in, hitting my first few shots, it's hard to say anybody's yeah, going to be course. really good. Um, but as soon as I sort of, I went for the county trials pool, and I didn't actually get through. Right. I didn't get through, and I think it was the manager at the time, um, bring me to a side and said, uh, you know, you, d- you didn't get through, but but we're going to sort of give you a chance anyway, sort of thing. So I, I managed to get in the team without even trialling, not even getting through the Still trials. Looking at really. Yeah, it was mad, really. Um, went to my f- first game, so I think it was second game I got man of the match. 
for like man of the sort of county county match and I think it was just from there that, that a lot of people seem to think you know I had something um if I don't know, I just enjoyed playing and, and I was winning. So <laughs> was was there a lot of money in the game at the time in no. pool? No. no, not especially not in the junior level. Yeah, of course. Um, I think because you're under eighteen, I don't think the. Think Are you even allowed been, to make that kind of money? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it was something to do with sponsors. Ah, oh, right. I, I don't see. know if there were like beer sponsors or something like that that couldn't. So I don't yeah, know. Like I don't know. I don't know if it was something to do with that, but. There was literally no money. I won all the world champion, European champion, and I got zero for all of it. So when did things start to get serious for you, Joe, then? Because obviously, again, you're not making money, but you're sort of proving how good you are, mm. um, under 18s champion, world champion. Um, you know, when did you actually think, you know, I'm going to pursue this pool thing? Or was it a case of, well, there's no money in it now, I might have to get a job when I'm old enough? Yeah, that that was the, the way I thought. Um, I knew that there was no career in pool, really. Um, and that's when I sort of turned and looked at snooker. I s- started playing a little bit of snooker around maybe 15, you know, the odd sort of frame here and there. Um, but I really sort of dove in when I left school. I, le- I, I le- went to go to sixth form um, to do A-level, no, uh, what was it? A-level maths, computing and... Uh, physics right so I did this at A level and um, four months in five months in I passed my driving test so Easter holiday and sort of previous sort of months or so I think the teachers knew that I weren't really giving my full attention to school mm-hmm. you know I'd sort of they might have heard about pool tournaments stuff like that and that they knew that I was sort of getting into snooker and my, I think it was my physics teacher or someone said uh pulled me to a side one day and said uh i think you should sort of take take a choice and, and you know just pick one because i don't think you can do both mm-hmm. you know I, we can see you're not you know not doing the homework or the coursework at home and and stuff like that so i just went to easter holiday passed my driving test and just thought i'm not going back <laughs> it's kind of mad though that that someone out of and i didn't go back this the the kind of school system would, you know, kind of support you in that way because it yeah. is support, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, it look, is. you either come here, stick yeah. into your coursework, get some good grades, and, and go on to do something academically, or actually pursue this thing that you're doing outside. And it's quite odd to see that, and it's quite nice to see that someone would support you in that way. Did you feel like you were getting support, or did you feel like I'm being? It's an ultimatum. This. No, it was more of a. Um, it was nice to see they sort of acknowledged it, what was happening. You know. I think because I was so successful as a junior, a lot of the teachers, you know, I went up in assemblies getting trophies and stuff like that. So I think they sort of knew a little bit and it was just nice to sort of, I don't know, see someone acknowledge it. And, and you know, obviously I had dreams, ambitions and, and one of the teachers, you know, obviously saw that and, and said, look, you know, we know you're not giving 100% to school. A level or, or whatever, and, and I think you should take a pick and just go for what you want to do. Do you know at that age? I just want to ask you. I'm just curious, like, because obviously we all play pool when we leave school, and that and we all like, we go down the local pool club yeah. or whatever the snow club. Um, did you used to just whip everyone's ass, like even your mates? You know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? It must yeah. be like that bastard. I want to beat him. <laughs> do you know what I yeah, mean? That I'll, feeling I'll, like in were like you always was... just like that. Yeah, schoolmates, it was always, I was the one to sort of beat. There was, uh, we used to go down like a youth club. I think it was on a Wednesday night. Um, There's a pool table there. And these are sort of the same people I used to play football with, mm-hmm. you know, schoolmates who have been, been with them for years and used to do little tournaments. And I was always the one that win it and win the free sweets and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I don't know. Did you take it seriously then as well? Like, even when you were playing with your friends, do you still, like, go into a, a pool match at the time and, like, I'm going to do my mm. best? Or do you can you play for fun? Do you know what I mean? Like, because pool's yeah. one of them where I feel like, again, it's not, I know there's a lot of skill involved, of course, mm. but, like, I feel like it's one of them, like, it, it's it's a different to snooker altogether. You know, me, me and you could, or me and uh, whoever, me and one of my friends could play, 
I'm gonna it could be a couple of frames here, a couple of frames there, and it's a bit all over. Obviously, I get it over yeah. over the over a course of cool. plenty of frames is going to be a, a dominant um, player. But with snooker, it's a bit different. You either you can either play or you can't. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like, did you ever take it like ser- Did you always take it seriously, even when you were trying to play for fun? Um, I could switch it off a little bit. I think would you? Um, but I, I think that the difference was because I, I was a lot better than my friends. It didn't really matter. Yeah, like, I get that. You know, like when when you sort of play in for England and whatever, you're at just at a level that I can't play that bad. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't. Know, it's weird, it's a weird one yeah. to explain, but when when you get to sort of a certain level, it's it's hard to. It's hard to lose over the period of the night. It's, yeah, I get you know, that. You're going to lose the odd one frame that's, you know, one of the lads might be okay. And, you know, they, they can pop balls, they can, you know, do something all right. But it's just, unless I play left-handed or something like that, it's, yeah, it's, cool. it's hard to lose. Had a really. few too many beers. Yeah, well, when I was 14, probably oh, true not drinking. Not. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely didn't try it all that age. No. Um, so, obviously your pool journey when did that kind of come to, or when did the I don't want to say come to an end but when did the transition to snooker happen it's about 16 17 somewhere around there um I can't remember it specifically um but that was when I well it was like when I when I left school basically right, that okay. was the I, I'd been practicing before that but that was the right this is it like did you find that the game is completely different like did you find it was like a yeah an actual, I've got to really put some work into snooker, whereas pool you maybe found um, more naturally? Or do you think you picked yes. up the snooker cue and still found that quite natural as well? But I've always been quite good at sort of zoning in and concentrating. So the, the transition sort of from pool to snooker, the difficulty didn't really matter. I'd always give it 100%. So I gave it 100% in pool. I, I practised a lot. I get I gave myself the best chance in all the tournaments and that was there was no different going from pool to snooker. The only difference was was being favourite for most tournaments, mm-hmm. going to bottom of the barrel, sort of, you know, jumping into snooker, nobody knowing who I was, still learning the game and watching all the, the good young snooker players, you know, majority of the time beat me do you know what i mean so how did that affect you joe mentally how did you deal with that because obviously you've came from this you're always winning you said yourself yeah. you're kind of addicted to winning as a young lad yeah how did you deal with that coming into snooker knowing that actually i've got to come up against it's a brand new game effectively i'm bottom of the barrel as you say how did how did that did it kind of take its toll on you <sighs> not really but it, it did take a little bit of getting used to mm-hmm. um you know i couldn't just turn up knowing that if I was playing eighty percent, I'll still win. Do you know? I had to give it hundred percent, and you know, a lot of the time I still weren't winning. Yeah, so it was, cool. it was just sort of a, just a sort of step back, a, a little roadblock, um, little little road bump sort of thing. Um, but it just made me work harder. It yeah, just made me go and realize that, okay, it just, it just needs more work. It's just going to take a little bit longer. I'm probably you know, seven years behind a lot of the players in snooker. They usually start, you know, nine, ten, sometimes even younger, and mm. I'm picking up a snooker queue at 17, so... What was the support network like around you at that time? Because obviously, again, you've you've done what you've did in pool. You've realised there's not a lot of money or career yeah. in this. There's going to be a lot of longer longevity in snooker if you if you perform and play well um, and get to a level. Um, what was your kind of parents like? What was your friends like? What was your support around you then when you are like, I'm going to give the snooker a go? Um... Mum and dad have always been like so supportive really. Um the dad more so in the sense of he was the one that took me to all the pool tournaments when I was younger. You know, he drove me around for you know, years. He he managed a football team, so it's literally yeah, been course. sort of the whole journey, do you know what I mean? Um and mum sort of the the going back home, um and just sort of I don't know. Always, they always be there for you. Do you know what I mean? Just a a general sort of. I loving. think it's it, it's a, the reason I ask you that, Joe, is because I feel like people like that to have that kind of. It's a real privilege to have that kind of support because I feel mm. like that not everyone has that in every sport or every endeavor. 
Um, so to have that around you, the fact that obviously your dad's been there from young with the football and stuff, I feel like that's given you that support that you needed at that time because I feel like a lot of players would have definitely crumbled making that transition. They yeah. lose the first few matches or they don't yeah. qualify or whatever and that can get to them mentally. Talk to us about the time when you when you qualified to turn pro. What was that like? Um, so I got through the EBSA playoffs, which was a... They don't do it anymore. There was two tournaments, two PTCs, one in Gibraltar and one in Germany. And it was the top eight amateurs of them two events. Right, okay. So disregard all the professionals. And it was, uh, I think you got like 10 points a match that you won or something like that. 10 points a frame, something like that. And there was like a rankings and it was top eight that went to a playoffs for two spots. And obviously I, I got into the top eight. I think I was sixth or something like that. Um, went to Sheffield in the Institute of Sport while the World Championship qualifiers were on. Um, so we were sort of playing on a few tables next to them. Mm-hmm. I played Brandon Sargent first, both first to fours. And to be honest, I, I, there was no nerves or you anything. Just I just I just played. I won four one. Then I played Oliver Brown um, to to qualify, and I was. Fine, I won four nil, and then got on. <laughs> it was it was a bit weird, That's but mad, I, but man. I could see that I think it was affecting Ollie in that match. Yeah, yeah. You, I could tell that he was playing for a pro spot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was just sort of, I'm quite a, quite a calm sort of person, so it just sort of. Did you feel like you had nothing to lose in that scenario? Like, well, if I don't qualify, I don't qualify. Or no. did you feel like you needed it? No, I I wanted to you know get through massively do you know what I mean I don't I don't want it to I didn't want to you know go another year or go to Q school and have to try and get through that way that was my chance to get on yeah and yeah I just sort of took it in my stride really I, I I knew what I had to do there was there was no change in what needed to happen and mm-hmm. I'd put the work in so just see what happens what did you do when you won and you got through did you celebrate or did you just go right now it's time to actually work yeah I think I was more like that mm-hmm. um I'm not really a, a celebrator, to be honest. I don't. I know you spoke to Louis like, earlier, and mm. um, he's he's a bit more of a partier than I am. I like, um, he likes to go out, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, just a just a nice chilled day and and sort of back to work, really. So how did your life change then? then? So you've qualified. What's kind of going on in your head then? Are you thinking right now? Are you looking at the money? Are you looking at the business element to it? Because ultimately, again part of this choice to go mm. down this route was for the longevity, the yep. career. Or did you think, I just want to enjoy what I'm doing? Do you know what I mean? Because I feel like for me personally, in my business, I it's the trade-off. I want to make money. Of course we yep, all do. But course. ultimately, I want to be able to do what I want to do every day. That's mm. why I do what I do. Um, with snooker, it's a little bit different because obviously there's a, there's a massive... You know, you, it's something that you've did for years and you want to now pay off and it's a beautiful game and all the rest of it. But yep. there's, a, there's a dark side to it, isn't there, really? Mm. And again, I think I've seen this quite a few times now with, with different players who I've spoken to, like yourself. Um, and it's, a, you know, there's a lot of locking yourself away and almost like, you know, an under it's like an underground basement or a club or whatever yeah. it is. Um, I mean, not every player's got the luxury of this. It's, <laughs> it's beautiful, it really is, for the people who are listening, um, where we're sitting now. But, you know, there's a lot of that and it's very unsociable at times as well what was your kind of mindset? Did you ever question yourself? Like, is this something I actually, because now I've qualified, did you ever question that and actually, shit, this is it now, this is what I'm going to have to pursue? No, that's that's what I wanted. Yeah. You no, know, I wanted to, wanted to be the best, really. That's all, always what I've wanted. It's It's not been about the money as such. Obviously, you get on the tour and, and it's like right now, now you've got a chance to earn a bit of money and, and, you know, take the pressure off, you know, mum and dad, you know, dad mainly, because um, he, he sort of supported me a, a lot growing up and just sort of take the pressure off, pay for everything myself now. And and, mm-hmm. and I did, I had a, had a great first season, um, which set me up nicely, took the pressure off and, yeah, just sort of allowed me to relax, settle down and, and get to work. That's amazing. That like the way you, the way you said that there was was really nice. The fact that you can help your dad for for kind of supporting you all. Yeah. Years, like, 
you know is that something that you're always kind of mindful of when you're playing matches does it ever come into your mind like if i get if i get through this tournament i can i can help out more or again is it more about the snooker um it's more about the snooker mm. um I've, I've got to a point now where i've been sort of self-sufficient for you know quite a few years now um I'd I'd love to you know help them, mum, dad, nana, granddad, every, everyone that's helped me. Do you know what I mean? But I want to do that when I'm at the top. Yeah, exactly. I wanna, l- let me get to the top first. Let me get everything I want to achieve. And who did you look up to when you when you when you got into snooker? Was anyone in particular, or was it a case of you just sort of focus on yourself? Because, I mean, I, I've just put Louis Heathcote there, and, yep. he, and he said, you know, Ronnie was the guy. That was the guy. And for you, do you have someone? You, I mean. Is there anyone in particular, or was it a case if you just want to play well? Because I think in d- every sport's the same. Like you'll get people who say the greats, like in boxing, the Floyds and the Arleys yeah. and all that. But then there's other boxers who'll get in the sport. They just literally they would have been in prison if they didn't do it. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. kind of different kind of motivations. Um, um, uh, so I got into pool not really looking up to anybody, um, just for the love of the game, really. Um, but then I started to see Selby. A little bit, yeah. and he became the person I looked up to. I sort of watched him go from twenty five, thirty in the world to, you know, one of the best ever. Now, do you know what I mean? And did you look at Selby because he's from Leicester, isn't he? Yeah. So did you did you look at that because he's from your area? Yes. We, was well, it? he was from the same club. You know, right. I went actually, I went to play not from the same club, but it was from the club that I used to go and play at the one four seven where Louis yes. Louis plays. Mark used to play there. Mm-hmm. Um. And when I first started playing, he played there. So he was the he was the best in the club. You know, he's the one that everyone spoke about and sort of everybody followed. Is the when I mentioned about kind of the, the darker side of snooker, have you ever experienced any of that in your career at this point? Have you ever had any snooker depression or anything like that where you've been a little bit like sort of question yourself or sitting in that chair when you're getting beat or in the on the practice table where you think, Do you know what, like this is this is tougher than what I thought. Um, no, I was gonna, I'd say no. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's obviously been days where you know you you probably can't be doing with it. You know you can't be asked to put the hours in, or you 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 don't want to you don't want to be involved for a little bit. You need a little bit of a break. Um, but to be honest, I've I've not really had many so-called downs um which maybe is the reason why you know i I go to the gym a lot i box quite a bit now jiu-jitsu play football i I try and snooker's not everything do you know what i mean i I try and give everything while i'm here give it everything but when i leave forget completely about snooker do you know what i mean i'll do other things and take my mind off it. And I think that's healthy. I think that's a good way to sort of go about a, a career in like sport. I think it's really refreshing to hear you say that because again, I think more and more players are coming onto that. They are getting in the gym more, they're doing more things, they're eating better. Um, I think Ronnie's probably got a bit of an influence on that now when he's talking about yeah. his running and stuff and yeah. you kind of see Sheffield them two weeks as just kind of a bit of a holiday, you get to meet his mates, go jogging yeah. and stuff. And you, you're hearing that quite a lot now. And I think again, that's definitely kind of helping out with that depression, if you like, or that kind of like, yeah. do you know what I mean? And around the table, because it, it, it mustn't, it mustn't be easy when you're in that chair. Like when you, because again, you probably are the way you look at it is you, you're playing against yourself in a way, aren't you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So when you know you're not playing well or that, you know, you're not performing as, as well as what you can, you know, when you're on that table, there's no player in the world that you couldn't beat. It's just mm. doing it consistently. So yeah. in order to, have fun with it, which will give you consistency, is to take yourself out of that mind space as much as you can. Yeah, I also think when I'm in them situations, I don't sort of get angry, get sort of built up around what's happening. And I try and look at it from a perspective as what's going wrong and and what can I do? You know, what am I in control of? Yeah, you know, is it is it something technically that I can, while I'm sitting down, think of? It? Is it is this um, is this happening a lot? Is it is it something that's I don't know something that I can pick up on? You know, while I'm there in the in the situation, 
And I think thinking practically almost eliminates all the depression side of, the of anxiety it. Anxiety. Yeah, and b- stuff. because you you you're thinking of solutions, not Problems. what's going on. Yeah, what's exactly. going wrong exactly, or what could yeah. go wrong. Yeah. Where do you think you got that mindset from? Is that something that you got from your parents or? I don't know. I don't really don't know. I think I'm quite. I'd say mindset wise, quite different to mum and dad. Um, you know, are they more I'll negative than you? Do you think? Um, I wouldn't say negative. Um, like my my calm side, I, I don't. Maybe more mum side, I don't really know. Fucking mad how calm you it, are, you know. It is. Do you know that you can like you, you can actually feel it? Yeah, <laughs> you are calm as hell. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just a. I think I don't. I don't. I really don't know how to explain it. But I just seem to thrive in like chaos. That's amazing. That it's something that you need for this. Sport I quite. I quite well. enjoy. You know, like problem solving. You know. Yeah. I, I enjoy that sort of aspect of life. It's weird. Do you get any help professionally? No. Any kind of coaching? Any kind of mindset no. stuff? Like no, no. None of that. I've and when you're practicing, really. how do you practice? Do you like to? have your earphones in do you like to listen to anything do you like to listen to podcasts do you just play do you get on with it how do you um i've been through stages i used to listen to headphones in all the time um but more recently we've got an alexa in here and, and i just put that on mainly i did that because i started to realize that my headphones were quite a high volume right. and i thought well, th- i'm doing this for you know six seven hours a day can't be good for my ears so i thought oh that's probably a better way to to go about it but again looking at that situation it's quite sort of logical sort of long-term thinking do you know what i mean yeah i think that's a it's certainly a a mindset that you need like i think is there i want to talk to you about obviously with snooker joe do you have a particular moment other than qualifying where you think actually that was fucking i'm proud of that one like uh yeah i mean I've, I've got two two i'd say uh the welsh open mm-hmm. my first year getting to the semi-final that was a it was a nice week that was sort of my burst onto the scene yeah sort of out of nowhere really um and the scottish open not too long ago uh getting to the final which unfortunately lost against gary but mm-hmm. it was a it was a great week beating you know five great players in a row you don't you can't do that by not playing like really well do you have any kind of when you're playing is your approach your mindset do you have any kind of i wouldn't say personal beef but do you ever have any kind of yeah i suppose is it ever about the player you're playing against your opponent or is it all about you and how you perform on the day it's never about them yeah it's i I know what i can do i come in and put the work in to prove to myself you know how good i am and yeah, it's, it's if, I've, if I play well on the day, then they've got to play extremely well. Because again, I think it's, it's kind of like a bulletproof mindset, which I think is definitely required in a sport like this, where you don't get, it's not a physical sport like yeah. that. So yeah. you don't get to actually have much say in what goes on when you're in that chair, you're in that chair. Yeah, yeah. But for me, like, I find it very hard to to see how, if you play a Ronnie or a, or, a, or a Mark Selby or someone like that, how you wouldn't feel that pressure how someone can just go in, I've just got to play my best snooker. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Does it affect you any any more when you're in them type of games with, with profiles like that, or does that not matter? Um, maybe slightly, but I would say that's down to the, the environment and everybody else that puts that sort of extra sort of little bit of pressure on. Mm-hmm. If, if it was just me playing a match, I don't think there's much. It's the... You know, when you speak to your family or your friends, or oh, you're playing Ronnie, or you, you know, oh, he's, he's like the best ever. Do you know what I mean? It, it just sort of subconsciously puts a little bit of extra. But they, they probably don't realise what they're doing, but it does a little bit. And I try to try to just stay neutral as possible. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to try and predict what's going to happen, or I'll put my work in, and whatever happens, happens. But mm. no, I'll give it hundred percent. And I'll ask you what I asked. I asked Louis on a podcast. Um, off the table, do you speak to many of the players, and what's it like from? Because from a viewer, I mean, I, 
I'm at the Crucible all the time watching as a spectator. I've been the qualifiers to watch and all that. And I'm genuinely a fan of the sport. Yeah. When I'm watching the sport, often you'll find that when players are practicing, they're playing games, they're leaving, they're very rarely speaking to anyone. Do you ever speak to your opponent in any capacity? Um, I don't speak to many players um, outside of a tournament. Um, no, I'd say, I mean, obviously, Louis, we've sort of grew up through the ranks like for a long time now, so he's obviously one of my closest friends. Um, Chris Wakelin, I, I play quite a lot, so he's probably one I, I speak to more often. Ash Carty, who's just got back on the tour. Um, but maybe that that's it. You know, Sanderson Lamb. Um, there's, there's not many, but that might be down to when I obviously come out of practicing or, or whatever, I, I do the, the football, the yeah, gym, of course, the like your boxing. Own personal interests yeah, and I'm stuff. sort of diverted away from snooker. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to talk about snooker all day long. I know that's a pretty, and what I, what I want to ask there is what do you think is, I wouldn't say wrong with the sports, probably a bad way of putting it, but what do you think could be improved in snooker? It doesn't even have to be the, about the game itself. I mean, in terms of social, like, what do you think that's lacking? Because again, like, I feel like for me personally, like, there's not there's not many eyes for young people to see. Yeah. Uh, to not many eyes on the not many eyes on the sport. Yeah, like yeah. Younger eyes, if you like. And I feel like why when you look at boxing, you've got the influence of boxing. When you look at football, you've got even academies and stuff which are promoted and, and all yeah. this type of stuff. Why do I not see many snooker players on TikTok who are really giving it some on social? Same as Instagram. Where's the reels at? What's happening? You're a player. How I want to know. Uh, I really don't know. Um, I think maybe a lot of the tour is a little bit older. Um, mm. Probably not in the sort of social media space as much. Um, but it's definitely something that I'm going to be getting into a little bit more. Um, trying to create a bit more content and stuff. So... It's a it's a space in the market that you've just exposed and I didn't want everyone else to know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. But I'm already here, mate. I'm already here to make this deal. Um, and that's the thing. I think, do you think, because for me, like, for people who are getting into the sport and who are maybe trying to turn pro, is snooker something that you would tell someone to pursue? Again, I've asked this a few times to, to different people now, different players, and I've had a mixed response. I've got, I've got, I'll, mm. I'll tell you what most people say after. But what do you think? What do you, would you would you recommend playing snook or trying to take it up and get into it professionally if you've got a talent? If if there's a talent in snooker like that, you can already see. Mm -hmm. So let's just say you you've got a lad who's seventeen year old. Yeah, he's, he's brilliant. He's beating everyone. He's he's doing well, um, and he's thinking about turning pro. Would you would you recommend go for it? Or, or would you be saying, look, there's going to be a lot of hard um, days and there's not a lot of money at the start? And... Hmm. I would say it's very situational. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, if you want to do it, just just have a go. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd imagine a lot of players would probably say no because there's a, there's a lot of sort of, you know, depressive sort of situations that yeah. you that you get you get yourself in but i don't know if you, if you i'm all for if you want to do it just do it you know I mean? and what's the worst that can happen you know three years down the line you go oh, it weren't for me do you do think do you think it's i mean i suppose there's been players who, who who've done it but do you think you you're much better off getting into snooker if you've if you brought up round money and you you know what i mean and you've you've always got support financially because again, mm. like being able to practice, I mean, there's a lot of players who who now have the keys to the local club or whatever, and, yeah. and it's amazing that that someone has you know the, put that belief in them ultimately. Yeah. And even from a young age, there's been certain scenarios where players will you know they'll take new lads under the wing and all that type of stuff. Do you think you can truly do this sport without that financial support? Mm, probably not. Um. I suppose it depends on how fast you show your talent. If you can show that to someone in your local club or anywhere locally, really, that's got a nice table, that you could be good. You know, you, you've dedicated, you've 
respectful of the, the table, the cloth and everything like that. I'm sure you can get some sort of help if, if you can't financially afford it, but um, it does cost quite a bit. It does cost quite a bit, and until you get to quite high up, you're not really going to reap the rewards, to be honest. That's the thing. So I want to talk about that. Mm. I want to talk about, um, you know, the people who are outside the top 64, not really, they're going to, it depends on who it is, I suppose, but again, it's situational, like you're saying, depend on their own scenario outside of the world of snooker but typically speaking if someone was to be in the you know outside the top 64 there's a good chance that they're not making ends meet and i would even mm. say that in the top 64 unless you're at the top of the top probably see outside the top 32 yeah. um would you agree do you think it, there'd be a lot of people in that scenario who are you know around 64 in the world who are who are struggling yeah yeah i would say so there's the bottom 64 on the tour is not Probably, I wouldn't know what they're earning without looking at the rankings. Um, it's not, it's not loads. You know, you could probably go and get a job at Tesco, Asda, and, and you're probably not that far off. That's the thing, isn't it? I kind of this is what blows me mind, Joe. Because let's say you're 64 in the world, you're 64 in the world. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, mm. like that's what's mad. Like to to pick up a queue, you, you're yep. the sixty fourth in the world, and you you need a full time job to basically support that. Like, yep. but then if you had the full time job, how how can you get your practice in? So it's such a. I understand why people fall into a dark place when they play yep. this game because it's so. You you need something more than just belief. I believe. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think in that have you have you ever had dark times? And I know we were saying a bit earlier about, you know, you're very calm and stuff like that, but have you ever kind of questioned like financially you know, or Yeah, anything? yeah, like maybe this isn't gonna work out via like it's not viable or you know, unless I do X, Y, and Z. I know you had a great you know, you've that, This that, is exactly what I'm gonna say. I, I had a great first season and that literally set me up. Like I've not had any real financial worries. You know, that's mad. That's you, you've. I got you've in. Done well from the and off, did enough. You? Yeah, I just did enough straight away. Um, granted, my next season wasn't as good, but. I'd, but still, I'd though, that kind of to fall back on. Yeah. Um, if yeah. you hadn't did that well in your first season, do you think? I know. I, I know. know. I know. It's a bit. Yeah, I don't know. Um, obviously, th this place might not have happened because I might not have been able to afford to build this so it, okay, it then. could have been very very different let me ask you this Joe so have you ever considered getting a job no. since, since you no never so it's never been I'm sort of one of these people that don't want to get a job either quite <laughs> sort of uh, not as in like entrepreneurial yeah, yeah, mindset wise yeah. I, I quite like I quite enjoy business sort of stuff and and I listen to a lot of like YouTube and stuff like that. You didn't say, you didn't say that about you, like to be honest. Yeah, quite. Yeah. I, I like to learn. Mm -hmm. I quite like learning. Yeah, I which think is weird. It's only really happened after I left school. Yeah, but then especially weird. especially when you've when you've sort of grew and matured yeah. and then got into snooker and understood earnings and yeah. what could be done. You know what I mean? And then mm. you start. You probably look at your options differently. I know. Yeah. I know. Certainly, when I got into business. Um, 14 years ago but only the last four have i ever made any money yeah do you know what i mean so i know i know about the grind yeah, I mean, mate, yeah. i'm 33 now you know what i mean i'm, I'm yeah, not, yeah. Not, not as young as you mate but uh <laughs> i know that like when i kind of made a bit of money i started realizing actually do you know what like you know that's this is possible now or that that could be an option yeah without that kind of experience it's very hard to understand that world and you probably yeah. got that from playing snooker yeah yeah, I don't know. You know what I do think sometimes? If I didn't play snooker, because I don't, this sort of, you know, business-ish mindset, you know, investing, that sort of side of things, I've had for quite a long time. And I, I sometimes think, and I think, if I didn't play snooker, I got a regular job, would I have, because I'd have had money faster, so I'd have earned money from the get-go yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah instead of, you know, waiting four or five years to really earn decent money, um, would I be a lot better financially because of the decision? Like, the I know not, what you do you mean. know what I'm saying? I, know what you mean. I could have had money faster and, and 
maybe in a better financial uh, like situation. Mm-hmm. And it, I always wonder like whether no, I'd because been, you, whether whether I'd have been in front or not. No, I don't think you would have because you would have had that you would have had to live, and in in order to to learn about your finance, you'd have had to waste money. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got to do them things. You've got to. You, I, I feel like you've got to. Like I've had the jobs at Nissan, and I've had the jobs, you know, in sales and all that yeah. type of stuff. And then before I went to uni and all these different type of things, and I think I've had to kind of learn throughout that process. Mm. Yeah, in business things are going a lot better now, yeah. but up until that point, I had to kind of get that all out of my system, if you know what I mean, and experience that. Mm. I feel like for you, you've kind of did it on the table, really. So leading up to that point, the yeah. mental resilience you've had to learn along the and way, overcome, which I don't yeah. think you would have got in Tesco's, like you say, or maybe, yeah, maybe. So I, I feel like there's there's a it's like a balance, and I don't really I don't really think there's a right or wrong answer to be honest. Yeah, I think it's one of them where this is kind of your path, and just hope it keeps going, and I'm sure it will because I can see yeah. where you're kind of going, and I'm sure you will go on to big things, really yeah. big things. Um, you're a talented lad, and why why wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? You've got yeah, the right man. attitude. Yeah, um, and I think that's that's something that'll serve you mm. because not everyone's got that kind of attitude. And I've met some people in, no, in yeah. you know, in different sports and stuff. And I've met people who don't believe they can win Yeah, a lot of the time. Yep. And I'm thinking, but you're fucking brilliant at what you do. Yeah. So it's almost like they've got this. They've got the proof that they, they, they can do it, but in their own mind they can't. I'm like, but you've done it. You can. Yeah. You can just. It's just rinse and repeat now. Onto the net. Do you know what I mean? Trying to yeah. learn constantly. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing right now, Joe, to improve your game? Practicing. <laughs> um, nothing spectacular, really. Uh, practice quite sort of routinely. Um, T lineups, long potting, different long shots. Um, what I have done in the past, I'd like to say earlier in the season, early, earlier last season, I um, started to practice more specific shots um, and not for shots that I was bad at, um, just for, for sort of different situations that felt uncomfortable. And just, just reassuring myself that I'm good at the shot, and just, I don't know, being it's really hard to explain, but like awkward positions on the table, mm. that they're not tough shots, but if you're not fully comfortable in uh, playing that shot, it could be the shot that it, you lose. Th- exactly, it could be the shot that you need to pot in a match, and you know that although you it might go in seven times out of ten, six times out of ten, you don't know whether it's going to go in or not you, you don't feel like you're always second guessing yourself on the angle or you know s- just silly things like that and i've sort of been practicing shots just to just to be more comfortable to be honest so yeah. it's a sort of weird way of looking at it but it has helped you know and that that was would be you know shot shots to the middle or really soft shots playing shots with side um just l- little things that we've sort of picked up on um is um like my granddad Des, he he's been coming to watch and coming into practice, you know, a couple of times a week picking balls out. And he comes to pretty much every match and he's been sort of watching, observing, you know, maybe we should practice this because, you know, you you've missed a few of these or do you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah, of just course. little things like that that you know, they make the difference. There's there's been matches where <sighs> For example, you know, mi- shots to the middle from a certain position, um, and we'll practice them, you know, for a couple of weeks or whatever, you know, a couple of days a week, and I'll go into the match and there'll be seven shots like it in the match, eight shots like it, and I'll pass all of them. Yeah. Do you know? And it'll be like, okay, yeah, that, yeah, that w- the practice was worth it. Do you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and there were crucial shots, or there's there's been a there's been times where they've people have come up to watch me like my mates family and des has been sat next to him and um i'd be lining up a shot um and you know my mate would go oh, i don't know what he's playing here he might be playing safe or something and you know des would be like oh no he's going for this like we've been practicing these sort of thing yeah so it's, Do you know what i mean you're just, drilling it aren't yeah you? So you're yeah, yeah. It's like it, you're playing out the situation mm, again if you just and obviously he's you know comes in and sees me pop 14 out of 15 twice a week do you know what I mean when it comes to the matches he's confident that 
I can get it and I probably will get it. Do you know what I mean? And it's just little things like that that don't seem like a lot. And you probably can't do that if you're still learning the game. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I've got to a point where the majority of it is pretty good. And it, now it's just piecing the little bits together and, and making a complete sort of player. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's having all them. Because, again, I say it played out in boxing. I say it played out in other sports. It's just drilling, isn't it? And it, yeah. and it is. It's, yeah. it's, have, it's playing out those situations for in real time when it, when it, yeah. when it comes. For you, when you... I've got to ask you, and I want to ask you, when you um, had that great season, yep. did you spunk any money? Did you treat yourself on anything? Did you splash out, or did you just be... Because I, I have a feeling you probably didn't. No. Did you not? No. Am I right? No. I, when I got to the semi-final of the World Show in my first year, I uh, bought myself an S3, an right, RDS3. Okay. Um, that was a great car. Um, had it for two years, two and a half years, and then <laughs> the the engine blew up, and <laughs> I lost about ten, twelve grand on it. So that I'd learnt my lesson there. Um, that that's it, really. I don't, I don't. I'm just saving, looking for opportunities. You know, like that's where the the business investing sort of so mindset. It, well, that's comes kind in. of why I want to yeah. ask you the question. So, do you have any business goals outside of the the snooker world? Um, I wouldn't say goals, but I'm just, I enjoy, I enjoy the, the, I don't know what I enjoy really, I just enjoy it. I've watched so much of like, yeah, I get it. I don't know. Business podcasts and yeah, clips just, and stuff yeah. and you feel motivated I, I, to, to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, with I've learned so much that I, it, I've got, I've got to use it. Do you know what I mean? I want to, I want to use the, the knowledge that I've got and at least set me up for you know, to be financially free at some point, do you know what I mean? And I suppose, again, you've got that, what better incentive than to help your mum and dad out? And do you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, it's, yeah. you've got that goal there and it's almost like that'll, that's going to keep, keep that fire burning. Yeah. And, so. and also, snooker's not going to be forever. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to become too old at some point. And then what do I do? If I've not set myself up from the money that I've earned or if I go and splash it, right? 15 years down the line, 20 years down the line, I might have to go and get a job. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, but obviously, hopefully, I'm, I'm, I can I can win enough tournaments or, you know, and, and, and invest wisely enough to set myself up. But on the same side, or on the opposite side, should I say, um, you've got to try and enjoy, enjoy your life. That's it, mate. What, you're 27? Yeah. 27-year-old, mate, you know what I mean? Mate, you're getting old. You're getting old, you're getting old now, mate. <laughs> I'm not old. No, <laughs> you're not. I'm not you are. old. No. no, I'm not. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you know when you look at the bigger profiles of the sport, yep. do you ever get kind of, I wouldn't say starstruck because you're, you're, in their sit, you're in their domain, but do you ever do you ever get that? I don't mean pressure. I mean, do you ever get that feeling of I'm playing a celebrity here? Because I think there's a big crossover. Obviously, you get characters like Ronnie, who's polarising and saying certain things and things are happening in interviews where he's became a character, hasn't he? Yep. Obviously, there's certain things that he said about other players on the tour and things like that, and it's a bit like, well, yep. I kind of understand why he's doing that from a business point of view, marketing. Yep, yep of course. Um, do, you, do you feel like these people are now more than just players, like the, their actual brands and, and stuff like that? Um, I think Ronnie's definitely pushed towards that. Um mm. Yeah, um, I see them as people more now, you know, because I'm sort of mingling with them more and more. Mm -hmm. You just you just come to learn that there's just normal people that are good at snooker. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's that's all it is. Like yeah, that. it's all it really is. Um, and when you sort of get to know them as people, that the social media side and the, the online persona or whatever it is. Is a persona, or, do you know what I mean? Persona, yeah, you know, I'm not saying that they've put anything, you know, out of character, but it you just you just see through it a lot of the time. Do you know what I mean? You know that this might Ronnie might say this for a little bit of attention for this. Do you know, it, it you can see it especially from the business sort of marketing angle. You can see why he could say some, you know, what I mean, certain stuff, and just take it with a pinch of salt. Are you a fan? Of the sport still. Are you a spectator? 
Weirdly, I don't really watch sport. Fucking mad. You don't. Yeah. Not, you don't watch snooker. No, no. Again, I think it's quite like. There's two ways to look at that. I think it's lovely. I think it's it's quite refreshing. I think it's nice to see that you you're in it for that and yeah. not alone. And then after that, you've got your own life. Yeah. But I also think it's quite sad because I feel like mm. you, you should be kind of you kind of owe it to be a fan of the sport because you're taking so much out of it. Yeah. Or um, you, or, you, or you're giving the game a lot as well. Do you know what I mean? I suppose that's the first um, and foremost. I don't know. It's, it's it's quite a boring sport to watch, I think. But but <laughs> but, but, but that, blow me mind. But that might be because I spend six, seven hours a day doing it. I don't want to see it again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? In a sense, unless it's like you know, Louis, if Louis's playing or someone like that, you know, well, I'll watch. An vested that's interest. a yeah, yeah. Um, but just a you know a random game on on the tour. I d- I don't really want to watch. Do you Have know you been mean? the the Crucible as a spectator before? Yeah, I've been um, two three times, all to watch Mark win the world. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Was that before? No. When was that? When? How many years ago was that? Uh, he won the first one. The I think one in about 2014. I was going to say about ten years ago. Yeah. 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 So that was before I was and then the other pro and probably all before I was pro maybe. It's well, just I, it's, I don't know, it's yeah. just crazy to hear you say that you don't really it's a boring sport yeah. like to watch. It's cra- it's actually can you understand from my point of yeah, view? No, it's quite no, mad to yeah, hear it like is, it I'm is. sitting here with a professional snooker player who doesn't really watch Watches but, I, but again I think it's I think it's quite nice but do you find yourself as an interesting player to watch? No. Do you not? Probably not. No. <laughs> do you think in order for you to be more interesting to watch on the table do you think you have to be more attacking and I think you have to yeah push the boat out more mm-hmm. does that ever Which, does that ever cross your mind when you're playing like people are watching I need to pull off a um, some kind of exhibition shot here maybe, or some kind of maybe not push the boat out more just like being quicker yeah because I'm I would say I'm I'm down the slower slower end I don't know how slow I am nowadays but um I think being quicker is is more entertaining, but that's hard to do if you're not naturally fast. Um, it's I don't know I don't know what it is really, but you know when you look at Ronnie, he obviously sees the shot maybe quicker. Um, but I think getting down into the shot, your sort of pre-shot routine. If that's not fast, you're always going to be an extra. Four, three, four seconds slower. Do you know what I mean? Because your routine just takes longer. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I just think when you come, see, you know, when you said about, I, I still, I'm still thinking about what you're saying. You, you, you <laughs> boring. That <laughs> genuinely, I wasn't expecting that. Which is yeah. because I feel like you're quite a methodical type of. Yeah. You know, it's it's a, you know as you say it's longevity. It's it's kind of business oriented. Yeah. Your, your kind of approach, which again I think it's a it's a beautiful way to look at it because I think that's how I would. Yeah. Um, probably try and do it for as little as I possibly could to get as much out of it. Yeah. Um, do you ever dread practicing? Do you ever think, for fuck's sake, I've got to just come and do this today? Like, or do you actually think, no, I'm I'm blessed to be in a position where I get to knock a few balls around and have the mm. potential to win. We're not we're well, yeah to earn to earn millions from the sport if you go all the way. It fluctuates, um, but I'll probably still come in and do it anyway. Would you? Yeah. Do you think you'd play if you weren't a pro? Or do you think you have no inclination to pick up a cue? You know what I mean? Like, don't say it, Joe. I don't know if I could stop. I don't think I could stop playing now. That's nice. Just because that's all I really know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I say that's all I know. It's not, but I don't know. It's a, it's a weird one. Um, do you find get you know when you're in a when you're in a match, right? Mm. Do you find that as enjoyable? I get it when you're in the practice room and you you know you might play with Louis or whoever, and you're having a knock about and stuff. Like I get there's some enjoyment in that, but there's still yeah. a, there's still a job to do. You're not there yep. for the good of your health. Yeah. Do you enjoy playing in an actual match? Yeah, yeah, no, I enjoy, I enjoy playing. I enjoy. It goes back to the I enjoy the winning. Yeah, that's and, it, and I I think I, I sh- put so much work in for the I I, I want to be successful. Do you know what I mean? I, I want to I mean. win, I've and that's what 
maybe motivates me to do everything. But if I don't, it's not the end of the world. That's what yeah. I mean with you. I feel like whatever you do, it's more about the competitive nature. Yeah, I think I'm just so competitive. Thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like if you picked up three darts, you'd you'd want that to be the thing. Yeah. Because you yeah. more would make the okay. Well, this can provide this. I can do this, and I want to beat them. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas, like, yeah. I don't even think feel, feel like it's the snooker that it is. It's just the competitiveness. The, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. You know, go, going into football gym, like. I almost sort of become a student of anything mm -hmm. and I, I want to I pick up stuff as much as I can, you know, as fast as I can. And that's, you know, I think, I think I pick things up in life, you know, as I've grown up, I've always picked, you know, driving up pretty quick and always sort of pick things up a lot quicker than say my sister. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think it's because I, I just zone out, reset and become a, like a student of that particular and I'd try and pick up, look at the best, what are they doing? Why are they so good? Because I sort of have a opinion of like, if someone's good at something, someone's doing something, it can't be that hard. Yeah, I get, I get that. I, I, I think that way as well. It, if someone's doing it, it can't be that hard. It's being done. Yeah, it's, exactly, yeah. And they look, make it look effortless. So it's obviously just a, you know, for example, like boxing wise, or it's just obviously skill. just a body position or, or having your weight right makes it look so easy. Do you know what I mean? It's not actually that hard. Do you think, do you think anyone can be good at snooker? I think anyone can be good at anything. Do you? Yeah. So do you think, for argument's sake, you could make me good? Yeah. Regardless, you think? Yeah, a... but, but you've got to put in the work. Yeah, of course. It's not, it, it's more not about me making you good. It's about you putting in the work yeah on. yeah i yeah. get that that's that's fair enough like it's do you know what mate i'm really i'm really pleased that you answered the question the way you did there because that was it was nice to know that kind of that's the angle you come at the sport from because i feel like you will ultimately give more to the sport being yeah. like that because it's not about fucking hell i need to win i've got do you know what i mean it's yeah. all like now i want to win for my own yeah. integrity almost yeah you know I, mean? I think it's nice to hear that mate so um what's the future for joe o'connor Hmm. Hopefully, winning a few titles in the near future. That's that's the next goal. The yeah. next one, the next step on the ladder to lift a trophy. I'm sure. I'm sure it will happen. Because again, I think you've got the right attitude. It's it's been a lovely conversation, mate. Cheers. Um, and I really appreciate you for for coming on. No, thank you. Thanks for having me. Cheers for your time, Joe. Cheers. Cheers, mate.